Recently, a good friend of mine, Kimberly, sent me a video that completely pulled me down a rabbit hole. Shout out to Kimberly for sending this to me. It was about something called Neurocam. Not the brainwave camera from Japan, but the infamous online phenomenon that's been floating around for years. Part mystery, part recruitment program, part psychological experiment. If you've never heard of it, Neurocam was a strange organization that appeared to be recruiting people through cryptic online ads and emails, giving them covert tasks and demanding secrecy. Some people were convinced it was an intelligence front. Others swore it was a marketing stunt. And many called it an alternate reality game, an ARG. But the deeper you dig, the more it blurs the line between reality and fiction. Was it a social experiment? A private security firm looking for people with certain traits? Or something more sinister hiding behind the guise of an ARG? Whatever the truth, what comes to mind is how easily people can be drawn into secretive systems without ever knowing who's really pulling the strings. Now there are two parts to this that I want to discuss. One part is secret societies and how they go about recruiting members. But in this presentation, I first want to focus on neural control, the hidden science of mind manipulation and how technology could rewire human thought and what will be the future of brain hacking. Because let's be honest, many of us have believed this kind of thing has been happening for a very long time and today we can point to certain technologies which we suspect are the mediums in which this is being done 5g technology for example why is it that people have this kind of gut feeling that it is something more than what we are being told Many of us have this feeling about our mobile phones, something we feel that is required to have in many cases, but at the same time, we don't fully trust the technology, the data collection, and the psychological impact it has on our daily lives. There's sort of a love and hate relationship we have with our phones, right? We believe we're holding our devices but in truth, they're holding us, training us for an inevitable future, a future out of control. What if the voice inside your head wasn't entirely your own? What if without realizing it, your choices, those sudden little impulses, those mood swings that you have were being influenced or even controlled by something outside of yourself, an unseen force secretly tuning into your brain like a radio signal. What I'm talking about is the convergence of neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and covert influence technology. Here I'm going to use the term neural control. The term doesn't just describe one device or experiment. It's a way of naming a new wave of brain science and machine learning designed for behavioral manipulation. We have algorithms that can analyze neural patterns, identify vulnerabilities, and test methods of influence in ways that are invisible to the public. And this would take place inside research labs 
it would be used in social media platforms and within the devices we use every day. Long before terms like neural hacking or behavioral engineering entered the public vocabulary, governments and organizations were already exploring ways to influence and control the human mind, right? In the mid 20th century, the Cold War fueled the creation of programs such as the CIA's MKUltra, where researchers secretly tested drugs like LSD, sensory deprivation was used, hypnosis, psychological stress techniques to see how far they could push memory and perception, and to test a person's obedience. At the same time, advertisers and intelligence agencies begin experimenting with subliminal messaging. That would be in the form of hidden images, rapid flashes, sounds embedded in films or broadcasts, just to see if they could bypass conscious awareness and plant suggestions directly into the subconscious. Disney has been accused of this, right? But they still do it. And this is not new, folks. This goes all the way back to antiquity. Ancient priesthoods and mystery cults used rituals, rhythmic chants, repetitive prayers. They used symbols to induce trance-like states. They used these things to heighten suggestibility or trigger altered experiences of reality. Temples from Egypt to Greece used music, incense, flickering firelight, ritualized movements as acts of devotion and psychological tools. And that would manipulate how participants felt and thought. If people wanted to call this magic, religion, or science, the methods were used the same way. They knew that human consciousness could be steered or reshaped under the right conditions. Today, it's all amplified by modern technology. Today, we have technologies that are becoming part of mainstream neuroscience that they have been experimenting with, and we can only imagine how long they've been doing this. This is what you would call neuromodulation. And that is when you deliberately alter brain activity with electrical or magnetic stimulation. And it would be one of the most direct ways to influence thought and behavior. The non-invasive methods involve technologies like transcranial direct current stimulation, TDCS, and transcranial magnetic stimulation. TMS, where they just pass low currents or magnetic pulses through the skull to excite or dampen specific brain regions. I mean, they already use this clinically to treat depression, to help improve focus, or speed up learning. The invasive methods are when they use things like deep brain implants where they place electrodes directly inside neural tissue to modulate circuits linked to something like Parkinson's disease or obsessive compulsive disorder, impulse control. And that's where neural interface projects like Neuralink come into play, where tiny electrodes can record and transmit neural signals in real time creating two-way communication between the brain and machines, right? So while they may market this as a breakthrough for paralysis and neurological disorders, the future of this are interfaces that are used as mind reading or mind writing technologies. Now for everyone else that doesn't participate in becoming a cyborg, Psychological conditioning combined with frequency manipulation is what they use. Sound waves, electromagnetic fields, vibrational technologies, 
things you don't even know are being used on you. In the beginning, they are promoted as wellness technologies and experimental ways to entrain brain waves or alter emotional states. But it doesn't matter because the infrastructure for directly stimulating and recording and shaping the human brain has been built. The data centers, the interfaces like your mobile phones, we have all that in place. And now we have something else that completes the technology. Artificial intelligence with the ability to analyze massive data sets in real time. It can now interpret brainwave patterns, heart rate variability, micro expressions, subtle changes in voice tone. It can map a person's mental and emotional states. It used to take years of psychological observation to be able to do this. Now it can be done in seconds with algorithms designed to read us more accurately than we can read ourselves. So what you end up with folks is predictive profiling and that's when AI anticipates your behavior and it can identify when someone is most vulnerable, when someone is most suggestible, when they are most likely to make a certain choice. This is so dangerous because it can be used to nudge people at exactly the right moment without them realizing they're being guided. Imagine political campaigns micro-targeting people's states of mind or corporations making advertising that influences your subconscious patterns that refusal feels almost impossible. Then you end up with covert recruitment of individuals or invisible manipulation that leaves the individual with the illusion of free will, while their other choices have been secretly removed or suppressed as options that they could take. In another video, I'm going to get into how secret societies and elite organizations find members. There are, of course, the ancient traditional methods, but for a long time, they've had access to vibrational frequency machines. And with that technology, they can tune into a certain vibrational profile and track you. They can find you. It doesn't really matter where you are. How would you like being neural controlled by someone in some secret location on the other side of the planet in real time. You see, I mean, you don't need to do this with the average person because they're already NPCs. You do it with people who can still think for themselves and who have power and influence. You minimize the risk of this type of technology being exposed and you maximize the benefits of using this on the right people. Everyone else gets the mainstream version of neural control. I have a joke for you guys. Do you know why Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt? She forgot her cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I know, maybe it's not that funny, but it's real. How many people do you think have run back into danger because they dropped their phone or left it behind? How many people have died with that phone tightly gripped in their hand? Mass surveillance, predictive algorithms, facial recognition, all this stuff has moved from theory to everyday reality in just a few decades. The mapping, the influencing, the directing of human thought have already crossed that threshold without public acknowledgement. Governments, corporations, hidden networks already experiment with techniques to subtly steer decisions and emotions. They can make people loyal on a mass scale. People are caused 
to take the mark of the beast, right? The digital IDs, the microchipping, the social credit system. How long have people been talking about this stuff? For years, right? Do you know why? Because that's how they condition you. This is how it works. It's called the Overton window. And that's when repeated discussion of a topic, even if it's framed as extreme or unthinkable at first, gradually shifts public perception until it feels acceptable or normal. You get this desensitization effect when constant exposure to something even in fearful or shocking terms reduces emotional resistance over time fear sparks conversation the conversation breeds familiarity and familiarity eventually makes the idea less threatening you see so even if the answer is not yet the infrastructure the ai the biometric sensors neuromodulation and people always talking about it is already in place with the ability to guide or override human thought existing what remains of free will and would you even recognize the moment when your own thoughts no longer belong to you anyway that's all for now and there is more to come please click the thumbs up button and like this video leave your thoughts in the comments below at least you are still free to make those decisions but everyone have a great day and until next time friends stay awake stay aware stay safe and i'll talk to you all soon